This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More on that later in the video. Experiment time. Today I'm going to test different baking vessels for your sourdough bread. A cast iron pot, a Pyrex glass dish, and the lid of an enameled roaster. Which one is the best? Hi, I'm Sune, and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to see if it makes a difference what kind of vessel you cover your dough with when baking sourdough bread. Some people, including myself, swear by cast iron. It has an excellent heat retention and it always gives me great oven spring. But those things are heavy and they can also get a bit pricey too. Another problem is that it's hard to find one that's very big, especially if you like the cigar shaped type of bread. So I decided to buy an oblong Pyrex roaster and an enameled roaster and compare them to my trusty cast iron combo cooker and see what difference it makes. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. As a member, you get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring videos with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. When I first started out here on YouTube, I had never recorded video and I didn't really know how to get started. I joined Skillshare as a member and found some wonderful classes about how to record professional looking video. I also found some classes about how to edit video using Premiere Pro that were very helpful. The last thing I didn't have any experience with was talking on camera. I found a class by fellow YouTuber Draw Jazza where he went through how to relate to people through the camera. I'm a lifelong learner and my creative output is my motivation. Since you watch my channel, I think that may describe you as well. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The loaves that I'm baking today are 700 gram loaves with 80% bread flour and 20% rye flour. The flour that I'm using is from a local mill called Kornbümüll. The hydration is 80% like in all of my experiments, so it's the dough that you know and love. With regards to the baking, I'll be baking at 260 degrees Celsius, 500 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Then I will uncover the bread, turn down the oven to 230 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and bake until the bread is done. Usually around 20 minutes more. If you'd like to support the channel, please buy some merch or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients or consider becoming a Patreon, which I'm linking in the card above. Thank you. Those were the words. This is the experiment. If you're interested in the formula for the bread, you can follow the link in the description or the card above. I'm making all the dough together as there's no difference in the dough, only in the baking vessel. First, I start out by mixing all the ingredients together until I have a pretty shaggy mess. I let that rest for an hour and then I start bulk fermentation. Planning to do three sets of stretch and folds with 30 minutes in between. The first set of stretch and folds. The second set of stretch and folds. and the third set of stretch and folds. Then I do a window pane test to see if the gluten development is good, and it is, so I move the dough to a bulking container to monitor the growth of the dough. I put the dough in the proofer and let it grow 25%. When it's grown, it's time to pre-shape the dough. Mm. 
after the dough is pre-shaped, I let it rest for 20 minutes on the counter. Then I proceed to final shape the dough into batards. I let the dough retard in the fridge for about 18 hours and then I preheat my oven to bake the bread. First I will bake in the cast iron cooker as that will need to heat with the oven. I grab the dough out of the fridge, dust the bottom of the dough with rice flour to be able to easily get it off the peel. I score it. And then I load it into the oven. After 20 minutes, I lift the top off and turn down the oven. Wow, great oven spring, cast iron rules. And here's how that looks out of the oven. Then the next dough that will be baked under the Pyrex lid. Score it. And then into the oven. Then after 20 minutes, I remove the Pyrex dish. Hmm, <laughs> great oven spring too. I guess Pyrex rules too. And here it comes out of the oven. Then the dough that will be baked under the roaster lid. Score it. And then I put it in the oven. And after 20 minutes, it's time for the big reveal. <laughs> Great oven spring too. Well, what do you know? And here it comes out of the oven. Well, let's have a look at the crumb in these three breads. First, the cast iron baked bread. Nice and well fermented crumb. Then the Pyrex baked bread. It looks like a twin of the cast iron. Then the roaster baked bread.
a little bit less open crumb, but nothing major. Still looks good. Well, ain't that a kicker? <laughs> it doesn't seem like it makes much of a difference what you cover your dough with. I love the Pyrex dish because you can watch your bread's oven spring live. The enamel roaster is super light though, so if the weight of the vessel is an issue for you, it's a great choice. In this case, I didn't use the bottom of the vessels and I placed the dough directly on my baking steel. I did this to have the covering vessel be the only variable because the enamel roaster didn't come with a bottom, so you have to lower the bread into the pan, which in my experience is a bit dangerous and it can also deflate the bread if you're not super careful. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.